and that so that it took us a while to be kind of confident and brave enough to try to to to, to make a sequel. I cannot imagine the story of Talos 1 without the story of Talos 2 anymore. Am I giving away too much? Somebody please shake their heads. Wonderful. This is a Thinky Games interview with Crow Team, who are going to talk a bit about the Talos Principle 2. Um, and it's sometimes known as the Talos Principle too in uh, in certain <laughs> English speaking countries. Um, so, should we go for the uh, formal introductions? My name is Daur Hunsky. They call me Sky. That's my nickname. And I'm like uh, lead. You know, they call me lead designer. I manage productions and you know help our team and uh, you know discuss stuff with the, with the, the most beautiful people on on the planet, like Kiratsis people, Tom and the rest of the. A beautiful crew team crew. Hi, uh, I'm, I'm Verena Karatsis, and I'm one of the three writers of the Talos Principle too. Yeah, I'm Davor Tomicic, they call me Tome, and um, I work uh, in game design and especially with, uh, with gameplay design, so um, everything uh, considering uh, gameplay experience of the player. Uh, hi, I'm Jonas Kiradzis. I'm going to go for a third pronunciation of my name. Um, um, I'm the uh, one of the writers of this game. I, I also worked on the first one um, and a bunch of other games. Who wants to give me a, a what they would consider a safe summary of the uh, Talos Principle Two? <laughs> what are we allowed to say? <laughs> Talos Two is sent. Some time later, after the um, the first game, quite quite a time, uh, you know, quite a few years after the original game, the first game was all about recreating civilization, bringing back humanity in robotic form, and we felt very strongly that this had to be accomplished by the time of the second game because that was <sighs> there's a tendency when you do sequels to just reset the world and just do the same story again and we wanted to avoid that we thought the payoff for the actions uh, of the player in the first game and of the characters and Gehenna and all this everything that happened has to have some kind of value and it has to mean something and it's a story about a turning point in the history of that um, that new civilization uh, when they are facing some major choices about what to do with themselves and how they relate to the world, to the planet, um, to their human legacy. Um, and it's kind of an adventure about joining an expedition to a mysterious island and what you discover there. Now, I don't know if any, not many people know this, perhaps, that I understand that the Talos Principle was originally Sirius Sam. Right, it was uh, some puzzles that was developed for Serious Sam, uh, which didn't quite fit because they probably weren't serious enough, uh, and then became this uh, adventure in in Puzzle Land, which is basically you know the Talos Principle. And now I understand though it was a bit of a bit of a leap of faith to actually do something slightly different to Screaming Headless Bombers. So, um, but this time, um, do you have the same? Did you have the same, like, ooh, should we do it? Or were you more like, no, you know, this is definitely a project which is going to work. You weren't as concerned the first time doing something completely different. When you try to, I don't know, see what's, you know, the, the, the successful puzzles or whatnot, there was not many. It was like Portal and, the, you know, you cannot compare to Portal. is one of the best games ever. And the guys own the store, right? So they could do whatever they want with it. And we love the guys. <laughs> but, uh, you know, maybe some uh, weird weird games, uh, puzzles successful, but very, very weird. Other than that, it was, oh, you know, people don't make puzzles that are, you know, sh you know, uh, make money that, that our team actually needs to, to continue working, right? So it was really, really, you know, we said, okay, we've, we think it is good. We, we love it. it it's a expression of one side of crow team people and, 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 and team, right? There's serious same like a brilliant shooter and there is like a completely like philosophical puzzle on the other side, which is, I don't know, crazy 
you know, uh, very different, but that's what we are. And we felt it felt so good. And we just decide, okay, let's go with it. So if it would be like last de- last thing that we did, whatever, right? We, we did, did it with our hearts. But at the end, it was very successful, much beloved, and put us into some other problems. That the game was so good, so good that we had uh, some big, sh- big, big, uh, how to say, um, shoes to fill in, right? And that so that it took us a while to be kind of confident and brave enough to try to 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 make a sequel. So much would be possible if we believed. If we still had faith. Well, you know, Serious Sam is always known for being big, right? I mean, well, no, I mean, there's big and there's there's Crow Team big, you know. Like the, the, it's only like at the end of the Serious Sam, you're going to have a, a, a boss bigger than the pyramid, you know, that sort of thing. And um, does it feel? It felt a bit like when you saw the the trailers for for the Talos Principle Two that uh, that kind of looks big. I was just wondering, is this still going to be kind of more of a, a hub structure type game? You know, that the Talos Principle is like, jump into this area, there's some puzzles for you to find. Or is this one a little bit more, I'm not going to say open world, but I mean more e- explorey? Well, 50-50, right? I don't know, what do we say? I would say that the general structure is still can be considered like a hub, but uh, within uh, those uh, structures inside of the hub there is much more room to explore there's a lot of interesting me- sort of you know meta puzzles and things in-, in there to be found so i think there's a lot of there's there's there are rewards for exploration um that i think are significant so i assume that the uh, traditional crow team easter eggs will be in there there's certainly a lot to be found and to be done um I hope that there's <clears throat> maybe a little bit more consistency sometimes because it, we're not in a simulation anymore, so there's some things that are a bit hard to explain. <laughs> this place might be meant to test us, but perhaps there's more to it than that. Yeah, I would say that this uh, this game, uh, the Talos One, you basically every player had the same experience. You know, game world was not too big, uh, and uh, you had uh, b- those hub with puzzle clusters and each puzzle cluster had a few puzzles and one terminal for you to interact and you could not uh, miss those and then basically you have to solve all the puzzles to finish the game in Talos 1. Well, this game is a little bit of a different structure. Uh, not all puzzles will be required to, to solve the main ending. Uh, and also, since area is much bigger, uh, there will for sure be, uh, for different kinds of players, uh, different kinds of uh, rewards and experiences. Some will maybe just want to go through the puzzles and just... Some will maybe experience part of the story there, some will be maybe explore more and, 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 and dig more about the game world and thoughts of the characters uh, involved. Although the Taos one was highly praised about the uh, uh, ramp up, like difficulty curve and stuff like that, we went. We didn't want to repeat the, the equation there. We went the other route, a little bit different structure. But I also am very satisfied with how did that that turned out. So we'll see how that. Maybe it will, it will, it will. The people will will feel the same about it as I don't know we do. But uh, yeah, it's different. It's not the same ramp up. Yeah. I think Daura we can we can reveal a little bit of, of what you hint, just hinted. Uh, in Talos One, uh, we basically started with uh, the simple, easy, very easy puzzles, and then uh, increased uh, complexity towards the end of the game. But uh, when players play the Talos One, you know, you know when you're coming to the last third or quarter of the game, 
you know that all just very complex puzzles are there and you have to work hard for each of, uh, of those to, to, to progress the story and uh, through the game and uh, it's, it is becoming mentally taxing and uh, you are just uh, you, this was very tough one you feel exhausted but you know the next one will be maybe even more complex than that and it's kind of discouraging for some players uh, that uh, whose capabilities were stretched at that point so uh, we thought maybe that structure is not the best so we wanted uh, and, and, and first part of the game first third of the game was very easy to go through so we, we spread those difficulty spikes throughout the game so you will have more like uh, maybe increasing of complexity at some point and then decreasing it again. The puzzle scape is effectively, it's, um, am, I, am I right in saying, it's still going to be like primarily lasers and like sigils? Something in that regard, maybe not exactly the same. All right, I get it. You pick up a gun at some point and start shooting through the puzzles. <laughs> I spotted green lasers, okay? I saw some green lasers. Should I get excited about other colors? <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to see, but uh, hoping that we have enough colors. Just the right amount of colors. I saw this mind transference um, uh, mentioned, and I didn't actually notice, but it looked like it was actually shown in the trailer. So I guess uh, that's going to be introducing a lot more, a little bit like the way we had the, the rewind mechanic, um, the replay rewind mechanic that gave you like you know, basically multiple different actors in the same puzzle to use. Um, do we get the rewind mechanic turning up again in in, in Talos Principle 2? Would you like to? Uh, I wasn't a fan, but I'm willing to redo this bit if, if I have to change my answer. <laughs> Some people liked it, but most hated it because it was not just interaction between two robots but it was temporal interaction because you have to be on the right spot at the right time and it... they were very clever i did actually like them when you finished them you felt good uh it's just it's just an unfortunate aspect that it often meant you had to restart the whole puzzle many times if you just got the timing screwed up but you correctly noticed uh, that we have some kind of the mind transfer in the game so it will work maybe similar, but also different because everybody is there at the same time. You don't have that temporal ro logic, which doesn't mean it will, it will be easy, but it will be easier to think about it. I have to ask about undo. Is there any... Did you think about putting an undo into Talos 2? Yes. <laughs> there, there was resetting yeah. in the original game, right? I'm not going crazy. Yeah. Yeah. There was resetting, yeah. but it wasn't so much undo. Because the thing is, it um, it kind of teased you with a rewind. And it showed you, like, oh, I'm taking you back through your moves. And it's like, yeah, yeah, stop stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> Just to that bit. When, when, when you're solving the puzzle, you're following some line of thought, some idea. You have some idea, then you're doing steps. And then you rewind several steps uh, back. And it needs to be relatively fast rewind because otherwise it wouldn't uh, be practical. And then you just end up somewhere in the middle of something, in the middle of steps, and then it takes you a lot of time to, 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 to get going. We were not satisfied with, uh, with the implementation of, of, of this, but also not with the result that we got from the prototype. So. And, and, and we've designed the puzzles in a way that we thought about every puzzle where you could get stuck or something. We were, we were thinking about the solutions that could allow you to get unstuck in every situation. Maybe we, we could not uh, avoid that for 100%, but it is really minimal in, inside uh, the game. And then once, when you, when you know the right step, most of the puzzles you can solve within no, within 30 seconds or probably a minute, the longest one, if you know what you are doing. So once you, you did the, the right steps up to some point, it's, it's relatively easy and quick uh, to repeat them. Can we nail down what makes a, a Talos game? Is it what Tom Zuba said, that you know it's robots and philosophy, or is it robots and philosophy and lasers, or is it Crow Team and 
mad writers. I don't know. On a on the writing level, sure, yes, robots and philosophy. But to me, I think it's the humanist perspective that that kind of defines the whole thing. That it's kind of this materialist humanist perspective and grappling with that, not just saying, okay, this is this is it, but. But the way that it tries to deal with it on a story level, on an emotional level, um, that's that's what defines these as um, yeah, as stories to me. So Talos One was basically Tom and Jonas, and you know, at least in terms of story, and they had their playground and they were allowed to do what they wanted to do, and um, and those two have very different opinions on on a lot of subjects. But um, on the second one, there was suddenly me and um, Tom. I had a, um, a much bigger um, input on it, and also Hunsky in a way. And um, so uh, we had, we suddenly had a lot of different opinions that weren't necessarily like completely opposed, but like there were lots of shades of um, of opinion, lots of shades of grey. And so um, we wanted everything to be um, represented like fairly. So. Um, this is one one story from like my personal experience. Uh, uh, there are other people on the team can can tell other stories, but when it came to voice casting, for example, there was a character who represented a, a point of view that me and Jonas very much don't agree with, and and the the in, initial gut reaction was to to cast him with a with an actor who was who had a slightly less likable voice, and then then I said, but we're not playing fair when we're doing that. Like we have to cast him as like the warmest, most most fatherly, most friendly figure that we can possibly find because otherwise we're cheating in a way. Because we're we're casting the the opinion that we don't like with somebody who won't who won't give it a warm um performance. So um so the in a way, um being impartial um was very important to us, I think, so that everybody had their equal say. Um, and that we wouldn't uh, force an opinion on the player. It sounds as if we might find out what happened to the folks of Gehenna, which which was a lovely ambiguous ending because it was it was not quite clear what was going to happen there. But um, I'm guessing we might discover what actually happened after the DLC. We will. Yes, it's um, it's not. I mean, you remember that that game ends very much on the idea that. The sacrifices we make are for the next generation, and we ourselves will not get to see them, um, not directly. Um, so I think that kind of sets up um, what happened to those people. But but um, but they are mentioned, and uh, they do matter in the history of of this game. Are you guys gonna try and make me cry again? Because you know, I I I think uh, in the I didn't cry in Gehenna, but. Um, I could feel like it was um, kind of troubling when you realized kind of what you're doing. Um, I mean, you're it's, it's you're trying to you're trying to save them, but at the same time, there's an element of destruction in what you're doing, and um, that was kind of an uncomfortable thing. Even though like it's a it's a puzzle game, I don't really have much in the way of like uh, autonomy around the story. But is it going to be trying to make me cry again? Yes. Um, I, I don't know. It, it depends because people react to very different things. I think it's a it's a very emotional game. I think that's a fair thing to say. It's a game that has it's about love. It's about death. It's about all sorts of things. And I, I do think that there is um, there is a lot of emotion in it. Yeah, uh, we were we were really trying to make a, a hopeful game because. There's a lot of dystopian narratives and science fiction, and Jonas and me, we, we hate those very much, so we were trying to do something that like, embraces hope in humanity, and, and I mean, even if it's robot humanity, but hope in, in what we are as a, as a species, as a culture, and uh, I, I mean, I don't think I'm saying anything like what the others haven't said, but that was very important to us. We've got the same musician working again, um, whose name I've been trying to practice all day and um, probably get it wrong, but uh, Damian Mravenatz. Um, Excellent. Thank you. Um, and so I guess he's doing the Tala soundtrack. Um, is it the same sort of kind of, well, the original Tala is a bit more haunting and, and mournful, which makes sense. 
Um, but I'm wondering, is are we got a slightly different musical escape uh, on Talos 2, or are we continuing with the same sort of themes? First, Big D, right? Damian is, uh, I don't know, he's a brother, right? He's not <laughs> uh, nothing else than a brother. Uh, an amazing mu musician, and uh, well, it is more, it's, it is similar, but as always, he brings something different for each project. And, you know, like, I consider audio-visual part of the game, like, one pillar, then, like, of course, there's a writing in universe story, and there's, like, core gameplay, you know, puzzles and stuff, so, the, you know, the game sits on those three. And, you know, just music is always, when Damien does it, it's, it's always great. I, I, li I'm, I have listened to his soundtrack for, like, <laughs> for Talos 2 for hundreds, hundred times now, and I lo just love it. Yeah, I think it... It still feels like Talos. I think that's the nice thing. It it sounds different, but it feels like Talos. That's um, that worked really well. Also, we have I think we announced this on Steam, right? We have a a guest musical appearance from Chris Christodoulou of um, Risk of Rain. Um, so who was a very big fan of the original uh, Talos principle? Oh, and uh, I'm a big fan of him. And you're so. a big fan of him. And he's a very close friend of mine so uh, and of Vernis so um, so that that worked out rather well <laughs> I'll give you one final question um, to all of you so um, each one of you is there anything particularly that you're really excited for, for people to see I cannot wait for people to see Talos 2 like like in a whole right? like as a whole as an as experience right and um, it is not Talos 1 that's number one but it's it is Talos again. So if people kind of felt Talos, I'm pretty certain they will felt Talos too. That's my my take on this one. I I, I I really am confident this is completely screams Talos in so many ways. Like is it puzzles, writing, visuals, music, whatnot? You know, charm, you know, everything. Um, it's a bit. It's a bigger game. That's that's for sure. And uh, yeah, it will take, a, if you want to dig deep and collect all of the stuff, it will take you a long, long time. We just finished um, the voice recording for Talos 2, uh, actually like three days ago, so um, I'm really still floating on the high of working with the actors, and I can't wait for um, for everyone to meet all these characters, because uh, Talos 1 was a very focused story, um, and we kind of necessarily opening it up now you know this was the origin story of robot kind and what happens after and so so it's this huge canvas of like robot civilization and am i giving away too much somebody please shake their heads wonderful um anyway so i i can't wait to uh, for everybody to meet our characters and our cast because i think it's it it really comes alive and i love working with these people so um, yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to to hear when the players had their first laugh, when they have their first tear in the eye, when they have first aha moment, when they feel the awe because of the scene or moment. All these big emotions they will be there and, and I want to hear when. Um, I'm just really looking forward to people taking the next step in this story because to me it's gone from being uh, just a sequel to this is simply the reality. I, I cannot imagine the story of Talos 1 without the story of Talos 2 anymore. Um, it's now one thing and I am very fond of these people and they matter to me, these these characters. And as Rena said, the voice actors, uh, we have a very eclectic cast of people that we sought out for a lot of these parts. They brought something important to it. Um, and I care about these people and the things that have happened to them, just like I was very fond and cared about the people of Gehenna and Elohim and Milton and all these people. And, and, and this is really what's going to happen to them and it matters to me, and I think that's the thing that I'm also looking forward to the most, just people experiencing um, the, the really the second half of, of a bigger story. Thank you. 
So if anybody watching this um, uh, hasn't played the Talos Principle or its DLC, The Road to Gehenna, they are currently on sale in the Cerebral Puzzle Showcase. So you should uh, probably check them out now. Thank you very much to all my guests and uh, look forward to the release date, uh, which is sometime in the future. Well said. Bye-bye. <laughs>